Today, probably the most popular log format for new applications are uh, JSON. So let's actually create one in this video and we are going to be doing another one for short one for Leaf and Ceph and uh, if you are in 733 which I have not migrated yet name value pairs and generic formats like uh, comma separated value CSV uh, all of them have in common that you don't have to do a single regex it's actually very simple to create that so let's actually paste in here a JSON format this is uh, for for Kubernetes but and I haven't done up to update so my curator system does not know anything about Kubernetes uh, log so we're going to create a sample one on how to process that uh, so as you see this is a like a tree structure with you know kind is event uh, 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 verb is uh, get user has two possibilities username groups uh, uh, source IP is an array so it can be multiple source IP so how do we easily create a parser for that let's actually get to it so we invoke the DSM editor and we're going to create a new one let's call it test one right and create here click save And we're going to select that one. We're going to start by pasting. I'm going to click here on the pencil and I'm going to paste the content of three logs that I have in JSON format. I click here and notice that everything is cannot be parsed, right? So let's start with, let's say that we want to extract the username. So we select here, we're going to override system behavior and the expression time is, is of course, JSON. Ceph leaf is also available in 7.3.2 and 7.3.3 have, uh, as we said before, name value pair and uh, comma separated values and things like that. So, and it's telling you that, you know, you put forward slash and then between quotes and the username is then a tree structure user right and then we want to extract the username all we need to do is just type it and as you see here there are three username system api server system node master and in the third log is service account and all that right so we can click OK. If we click here, save. If we scroll to the right after save, we'll see that the username is populated. Before, there wasn't anything there. And in fact, we can always go here and select only the fields that we care about like event name, event ID, event category, and username, where is username? Here at the end, right? So click update, and these are the things. Now, we need to, we're gonna extract some other things like event category and event ID, and then we'll do the mapping. Say when this event category and this event ID are present, then that maps to a friendly name that we'll give to that element so let's uh, continue now with uh, actually let me add here uh, source IP as well because I want to extract the source IP okay as you see it's not populated let's continue let's actually do here source IP here it is we're going to overwrite system behavior. This is JSON. And 
to get to the source IP, as we saw before, that's an array. So there might be more than one source IP in this format, in this uh, type of log. So if we put here source IPs, as you see there, we need to now specify which of the source IPs we want, and we want the first one. So we index the first part of the array, and there we have it. As you see, in these logs now we got the source IP. Let's continue with the event ID. And we can actually save along the way, right? So let's actually do event ID. Override system behavior. This is JSON. And the event ID is the verb. And then you see that you have the option get, create, and there's another one here. Let me see. Get, create. No, there. Get and create are the ones that we have in this particular example. So we click OK. And we see them here. Let's actually add the event category. Event category, override system behavior. Again, this is JSON. And the event category is under, is on a tree structure again. Is the first is object ref, as we see there. And then under that, there is resource. And then we get nodes, services, etc. Right? Notice that this is not uh, populated. As soon as we hit here, we get that being populated, services, node, and pods. Now, what we want to do is create some mappings. That's what that mapping is here on there with asterisks. Because we need to say, for example, when this the event ID is get and the event category is nodes, we're going to call these list nodes, right? Same thing with this uh, get and services, we're going to do list services. So we need to add that friendly event name uh, and we could do that by clicking here on event mappings, clicking on the plus sign, and then we say that when the event ID is get, and the event category is uh, nodes, then we are going to create, choose we to do, choose QID, there's no QID because again Curator doesn't know about this particular, let's say that this is something that is custom, so I'm going to create a QID for it and I'm going to call it these notes and you can put the description you want to put there. And here you need to select the right high level category. So, uh, Because again this is just an example, I'm going to select here high level category system. Uh, let's put here information. Okay, And the severity I'm going to leave it by default as 2. So we click here save we click OK, we do
create and now on the event name when we have the mapping that the event category is node and get we get list node. We need to do the same for services and for pod. Let's proceed. Let's actually add another mapping and this is going to be for uh, list services, right? So, and this is when the event ID is uh, also get and the event category is services Oops, didn't type it. Services. Again, we're going to create a QID because there's no one here. So we click create and we call it list services. Again, a description. And as before, you need to select the appropriate category here. So let's put the same. I think I chose system before and information. Need the severity. Click save. Click OK. Click create and bang, we got the list services. Let's do it quickly with the pods as well. So when the event ID, moving this up so we can see it. So when the event ID is create, and the event category is pods, choose a QID, create one for me, Create pod. System information. Save. OK. Create. And bang. So you'll do that with all the mappings. Once you've done the mapping, you. You can do it along the way, but it's, it's a good point right now to save what we have done. Now, we want this to be auto-recognized by the traffic analysis. So we go here into configuration. We're going to go back to property auto-detection. It's a very nice feature. So we enable that. And by default, this is set up, you need to get 25 events for this to be recognized. Let's, uh, let's actually make this to just two. And the success rate is 35%. Let's actually make that 100% because we know this is very well structured, so we don't need to guess here. And uh, we leave the number of attempts of the, to 1,000. One we leave all that the same. Now, we are almost done. Let's actually test this out. We can close this in here. Let me open a terminal and show you how we're going to be testing this. So I SSH into the curator box and create a directory. And now I'm going to create a file that is going to contain the sample logs that I, that I have. Let me call Kuber API an example and I'm whoops I'm pasting the logs in there I save them and now we're gonna replay the logs to use the log run and I have done separate videos that show how to use this this tool now before I run replay the the, the, the events with log run I'm going to put the right filter in here, so I know that my events in the payload contain the word kind, followed by colon, and the word 
event just to make sure that I get too many log sources in here so I can catch these uh, when they come so I'm gonna add that filter I'm gonna put this real time go back to the terminal session and I'm, I'm using the log run command on TCP that's the address that I'm gonna be spoofing this from and that's the file where we put all those logs one event per second if I did this right I should start getting the logs and we see one event unknown, one event unknown well the auto discovery did not work because it seems I when I was doing the VI I didn't do the I as an insert and I put the logs files in a strange format so I redid this actually put another spoofing address to uh, 58 to test and we see that the events are uh, being auto discovered and we see them correctly parsed. Now we're almost done. If we take a look at any one of these, for example, let's take a look at the first one, right? These are things that I have done previously, but in a clean system you should not have any one of these custom. But as you see there are a bunch of properties here that I'm not extracting. So the whole way of doing things is to go here and extract properties and because this is JSON, it's not too hard, but you know, uh, you, ne you need to, you know, select those individually here. You have the JSON format, no, no need to do uh, any regex, but there is a better way. Let's actually return to the DSM editor. If we go to configuration and we go to this beautiful property auto detection configuration and click here, enable it right let's save that can actually close it we come back go back here to the logs let's actually clean this up and go in real time let's replay those logs again one more time and if I did this right you'll see a big difference now let's take uh, for example the last the last event let's stop this let's look at this beauty all those properties has been extracted automatically for you and you can actually there is an option that didn't enable it but if I go back to the DSM editor there is even, even an option to have all those scenes being automatically indexed for searches we actually go there configuration this option here that I did not select but you can in order to improve your searches this is quite you know the difference with the initial stages on on on, on creating the SM as you can see is very easy to do that my excuses for making this video as long as it has turned out to be